Hey guys, Brian Beeler here with Storage View, and today we're taking a look at this server from Inspur, which is one of the most creative servers we've seen in the lab in a number of years. This is the NF5266M6. Now the M6 line from Inspur brings forward a lot of innovations. Our specific model is loaded with them. If you take a look at it, it looks just like a normal 2U server, which is all fine and dandy. It's got indicator lights over here and some activity uh, beacons on that side and what looks like where the hard drives would normally go. But this design is entirely different. A reminder, this is just a 2U server and it can hold 24 three and a half inch hard drives in the front and some more in the back, which we'll get to. So how can it fit all of those things into what would typically be 12 three and a half inch bays across the front? That's these trays that it's got. So there are three rows of these that when we open the handles and extend, we can see two rows of hard drives inside. So eight hard drives per row, three rows, 24 hard drives. This gives you amazing density in a 2U platform. Now the chassis is a little bit longer, but it fits in standard racks and should be fine for most use cases. Further, what's really interesting is that these drives are also hot swappable. So when I flick the little button here, this guy comes out in a little tray, can be swapped out for another drive, uh, really easily. So these are hot swap trays, a drive can be removed and, uh, and drop back into the system while it's running. We did this as part of our review and things went along just fine when this system was active and under load, pulling the trays out, messing with the drives had no impact on the delivery of throughput or IOPS. Let me flip it around the back here too so we can see what's going on back there because there's a lot of really neat options that are available to this system. So when we flip the box around the back, here's where things can get really interesting from a storage perspective. Of course, we've got redundant power supplies here. We've got your standard connectivity, a bunch of PCIe slots, and even the uh, OCP 3.0 uh, 10 gig card. So we've got some decent options and flexible options to put additional uh, cards in the back for connectivity or whatever you want. But I've teased storage before. Ours has four SSDs in the back. And if we pop these two first, these are Intel S4510s, so these are two SATA bays, and that's great for putting a boot image on there if you're gonna run VMware or uh, Windows or whatever you want, that's, that's great to have. There's also two M.2 bays inside uh, where you could do the same sort of thing and use these bays for something else. A lot of organizations prefer their drives to be externally accessible, and so these bays come in really handy. We also have two NVMe bays, and these have uh, P4510s. We actually use P5510s in our review, but this gives you a really neat opportunity to put caching drives in here. So if we're looking at something like uh, vSAN or Inspire even has their own HCI software uh, dubbed Rail, when we start looking at what can be done with a little bit of NVMe cache in front of those 24 hard drives, you get to a really interesting situation. Uh, again, with any of the software defined products, Having a couple of these NVMe bays on back gives you a lot of flexibility to have a little bit of oomph into the system, whether used as a cache or tier, or whether used just as a flash volume that's a little bit smaller, a lot of opportunity. Uh, again, though, any of the software-defined guys really benefit from this, whether it's HCI or something like Starwind or even TrueNAS, a little bit of NVMe goes a long way. So now that we've seen the front and back of the system, why don't we pop the lid off and show you this main compartment where the Ice Lake CPUs, DRAM, and everything else reside. So as we look inside the server, it's pretty neat what Inspur has done here. I mean, really what they've got to do is fit half of the engineering into the back, actually less when you account for the fan bank, um, since the hard drives take up all the, uh, that space in the front. So in the mid plane here, we've got one, two, three, six of these hot swappable fan units that'll take the air and blow them over the, uh, the CPUs and DRAM underneath. 16 DRAM slots, again, these are Intel Ice Lake, uh, third gen Intel scalable Xeon uh, CPUs, and then the uh, airflow continues out the back. Now we did talk about the storage bank back here. This is one of my favorite parts of the server because while we've got two SATA and two NVMe bays in here now, this piece can unscrew and come out and is totally modular. In fact, Inspur has a bank that you can slide in there that's got E1S uh, short ruler SSD bays 
That's an amazing way to get really dense, high capacity. Those are available up to eight terabytes from a lot of vendors. Uh, storage in the back if you need more than just a couple drives for cash. Underneath this bank is the RAID card for the hard drives. And of course, we've got the power supplies over here. If we take a look at the PCB closely over here, you'll notice that there are two uh, M.2 slots there that support drives up to 110 millimeters in length. And then we've got a couple uh, PCIe expansion options off the side there. And of course, as noted that you can't see here because it's underneath again, uh, there's an OCP card on here. So we've got a 10 gig NIC via that card as part of the system. As we look at performance, we've got uh, two Intel Xeon Platinum 8352Y CPUs in the system. So those are 32 core, 64 thread. We've got 256 gigabytes of DDR4. And from a storage perspective, we've got two 7.68 P5510 SSDs from Solidime and 24 eight terabyte WD hard drives. Now in our testing, we really focused on the SSD performance, but we did put the hard drives through some large block work as well. And just looking at some of the highlights here, starting with 4K random read, uh, the server did pretty well here, staying under 200 microseconds latency until about 1.2 million IOPS. Uh, it ended the test topping out 1.4 million IOPS uh, with a latency at 688 microseconds. Looking at random write 4K, latency stayed sub 50 microseconds until about 700,000 IOPS where it kind of ran into the wall uh, in terms of latency at about 841,000 IOPS. Now when we start looking at the 64K performance sequential with the SSDs, we topped out at nearly 10,000 megabytes per second, pretty respectable given it's just those two Solidime SSDs. Sequential write, we uh, see about a little less than 4,000 megabytes uh, a second at uh, 950 microseconds latency. So that's not too bad, really, and uh, nice performance, again, out of those two SSDs. Now, the hard drives we also took a look at with 64K, looking at uh, sequential read, we see 1,400 megabytes per second, and then as we roll over to sequential write, we peaked out at a little bit over 2,000 megabytes per second. Now those performance scores are you know, just the way we tested and we're not hitting the entire drive surface. Uh, so depending on your workload, you might get more out of the hard drives in your pool. So overall, there's a lot to like with this Inspur server. We're big fans of, of the M6 and even that hard drive module in the back, you can uh, configure the server with E1S rulers, short rulers inside, which would totally change the, the personality of this thing if we had a larger bank of high performance storage in there coupled to the capacity drives inside. And keep in mind, we're just using the eight terabyte drives in the system as it came shipped to us, but throwing 20 terabyte drives in there would make this thing an absolute beast, either as a single node of some sort of software defined storage uh, Windows, TrueNAS, whatever you want, or in a cluster with something like Inspur's own HCI solution, vSAN, Azure Stack HCI, again, whatever you want. If you've got a high storage capacity need and then some element of performance, whether it's a little bit of cash or a big bank of rulers for a lot of high performance, this server is really compelling. So we're excited. This is the first of the M6 line we've seen in our lab for review and can't wait to see more from Inspur.